All right. So Deuteronomy, Joshua 24, 1 Samuel 12, have been compared to these vassal treaties in both their structure and meaning. The oath imprecation in which deities or deity are inv invoked to bring curses on a violator of a treaty is extremely common in Mesopotamian treaties. It may also be discerned as part of the covenant of Deuteronomy. In the ancient world, curses and blessings were perceived as powerful forces that shaped human destinies. Curses were spoken, enacted, and inscribed by human practitioners, but were imbued, imbued with the power of the divine realm. To make an oath or a solemn promise required an act of conditional self-cursing or calling upon divine power to inflict dire punishment that should the promise be broken. Studies of the curses in Deuteronomy 27, 28 have primarily employed a form and literary critical approach to study curses and formulae for cursing in comparative literature. However, the inscribing of curses was only one as aspect of their pronouncement and enactment. Oral delivery and ritual performance were integral to the perceived effectiveness of curses. It had nothing to do with your genetics. You had to partake in the ritual within this vassal treaty, right? You had to orally say that you will you will take on these curses, right? You had to be part of a ritual performance and oral delivery so that these curses could be laid upon you. But you have to ask for it. It has nothing to do with genetics. Um, a study of the oral background setting of Deuteronomy 27, 28, and of ancient Near Eastern treaties more generally reveals that oral pronouncement of the oath before a gathered assembly was a central component of covenant and treaty ratification. You had to say these things. You had to say them. Um, which is interesting, right? Because when you get to Nehemiah, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish real quick, 1029, hereby participate with their colleagues, the town leaders, and enter into a curse and an oath to adhere to the law of God, which was given through Moses, the servant of God, and to obey carefully all the commandments of the Lord our God, along with his ordinances and statutes. If this is passed to you genetically, there's no need for you to enter into anything. And it's interesting that it, it happens in Nehemiah. Why does Nehemiah? They get brought back from captivity, back into the land. So now that they're back in the land, they got to get back into covenants. But the covenant is landlocked. So it makes sense that now that they're back in the land, they enter into a curse and oath. So that's my two cents. I almost went to sleep here in this crap. Seriously. <laughs> you Christians are through, man. Following this knucklehead at the bottom by the name of Vocab Malone, which is at the uh, bottom. Hold on, let me let this. This uh, <clears throat> little little thing he slipped in, I think. All right, there we go. This knucklehead right there, right there to your uh, left at the bottom left. All right, with the glasses on, vocab Malone, and the rest of these three knuckleheads. All right, <laughs> following this guy. All right, trying very hard to debunk the Israelites, man. All right. Now this guy's saying that the curses are an agreement, okay? You had to agree to these curses. What kind of crap is this, man? Seriously? <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, well, let me get started with this mess. It's knocking. Let me, let me get my opening in, all right? So, by the way, shalom, shalom, all right? Call him, let him, you how about some yow shy, by shem, rakak, wadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations goes to the whole for elect that is scattered abroad. <laughs> to you brothers out there pushing this struggle with our righteousness and sincerity, and to the Yaqua, the few sisters that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. Coming back at you with another quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, no one to edify and the faith and lamps in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Through the spirit of Kakwadash, I pray it's less be edifying and straight to the point. So this guy is reading some crap that he found, I guess, out of a book or something, whatever it is, all right? And he's talking, reading, and he's saying that, you know, that you have to agree to the curses. Now, let's see what the Bible says, man, all right? 
So without further ado, let's crush this clown. All right. Let's crush him. Let's go to the scriptures. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's start off with. Mm, yeah, I'm going to start off in Deuteronomy. All right. And work my way. All right. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. All right. But it shall come to pass. Does it say anything about if you agree? To these curses? No. It said, but it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi al thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, who these curses was given? Now, who these law statutes, not? who the law statutes commandments were given to? All right, let's find out. I think I got it in here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's one. Let's get that. This is Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So wait a minute. So the Lord said he gave us the law, statutes, commandments. We're supposed to obey the law, statutes, commandments. Now, we're in captivity. We can't obey all of them, all right? But we try to follow the ones that we can to the best of our ability, okay? In the kingdom, we will be able to follow those law, statutes, commandments to fully. Why? Because they will be written in our minds. And the reason why we went into captivity, because we did not listen to the glory. How about Shin Yashai? We did what we wanted to do. We followed other gods. We started following in the ways of the heathen. All right, we're going to prove that, okay? So that's why these curses came upon us, man, okay? Psalms 147, verse 19 again. He showed this word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the glory, how about Shem Yashai? So the law, statutes, commandments, were given to the Israelites. No other nations, man. All right? So we, the Israelites, when we went off, okay, we started following other gods, following after other gods, and not obeying and hearkening to the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, Shem Yahshai. Hey, the Lord said, okay, let's go back. We're going to go back. We read this. Let me clear that. Let's go back. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 15. Let's read this again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh thy power. And we did not. We started doing what we wanted to do. Okay? To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 16, curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou snug it, and curse shall thou be in the field. Okay? Were we not in the fields? Were we not slaves? Yes, we were. We were slaves. Okay? All right, let's get another scripture uh, to back up what I was just saying. Let's go here. All right? This is uh, Leviticus 26 and verse 46. These are the statues and judgments. And laws which the Lord Yahweh made between him and the children of Israel, the Israelites, in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. You see that? So, there you go. Okay? And if we will break those laws, then hey, all the curses will come upon us. Okay? So, let's go back. Now, let's get some of those curses. Uh, Yeah. Let's read some of those curses. Let me start up. I read one of them. Mm, actually, let me start up a little bit. Mm, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, let's start at verse 28. 
Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. The Lord Yahweh shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Let not the Lord smite us with mental illness, all right? Let not our people bug the hell out. Yes, we are, okay? All kinds of diseases. We get sick, okay? So, hey, there you go. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. We were not brought here to prosper, okay? We were not brought here to Babylon the Great to prosper or to make it here in Babylon the Great America. <clears throat> and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled, <coughs> excuse me, and more, and no man shall save thee. You see? <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay? And it says, no man shall say thee. I got his precept on that. <clears throat> Cause his fan on. Kinda hot. Um uh -oh. <clears throat> This is uh Lamentations chapter four verse seventeen. As for us, our eyes have yet our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. Let me read this again. Sloppy. I'm sorry about that. He cut this fan on getting hot. It's probably why I'm coughing. Anyway. <clears throat> back to the scriptures. Lamentations 4 and 17. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So, hey. We watch for a nation that can't save us, man. All right, did not the Lord say that no one will save us? Let's go back. I think I got, I think I had a bookmark in here. Yep. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy way, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Okay? So no nation Okay, we'll be able to get us out of this captivity. Okay? And is not captivity being a slave is a curse? Yes, it is. Okay? Is not being scattered into all nations is a curse? Yes, it is. Okay? All right? <clears throat> I think I still got that mark in here. So, let's go back. Let's go back to Lamentations 4 and 17. All right? Let's finish this out. Lamentations 4 and 17. As for us, our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Verse 18. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. Our end is come. Okay? All right? Verse 19. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles, eagles of the heavens. Who has the symbol of the eagle? The Edomites. Okay? Isn't that not our enemies? Yes, they are. And we're going to prove that. Okay? They pursue us upon the mountains. They lay wait for us in the wilderness. Okay? So there you go. All right? Sloppy. Look at that. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me do something right quick. Right. I don't want to be stir sloppy. All right, so let's go back. Now let's go back. All right, let's read verse 30. Okay. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Okay. Do not all women hate us? Yes, they do. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard. And thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Okay? So there you go. All right, let's skip down. Yeah, let's go here. Verse 37. Here's another curse. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord Yahweh shall, shall lead thee. Okay? Okay, so we didn't, we weren't called the Israelites anymore. We lost our heritage. Okay? 
losing our heritage. That's a curse. All right? And as a matter of fact, <laughs> got to prove that. Let's go to Jeremiah 17 and 4. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall, con shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have come to a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Okay? We lost our heritage. Okay? But now we're coming back. We're remembering ourselves. Okay? So, hey. Is that not a curse? Yes, it is. Did the Lord agree? No. The Lord said he was going to do all these things unto us. If we didn't hearken unto him, if we didn't listen, obey his, the, obey the law, statutes, commandments, okay, we broke that first covenant. That's why we got we got to be under the second covenant. All right, we're not under the second covenant though, but pretty soon we will be. All right, when Yahusha returns, all right, and when he comes in to deliver his elect, okay, then in the kingdom of heaven, then we're gonna be under the second covenant. Then the law, statutes, commandments is going to be written in our inward parts. Okay? All right? That's why it was the second covenant is needed. Okay? That's why we need, all right, Yahusha to come back, man. All right? Let's see. Let's go back. All right, I made that point. Let's get down to verse. Yeah, right here. Verse 43, and the, not, the strangers that is within thee shall get up above the very high, and thou shalt come down very low. We're at the bottom. Okay? Is that a blessing or a curse? That's a curse. These other nations ruling over you, ruling over the Israelites, man. Okay? And we're at the bottom. Getting our asses kicked by these other heathen nations, including Esau, even the so-called white man. That is a curse. Okay. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. We are the tail. Okay. <laughs> We're at the bottom, man. We're the lowest of the low. But that's about to change real soon, though. Okay, Lord willing, man. All right. We're about to be delivered out of this captivity. All right. Let's read on. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and pursue and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh Pashim Yashad power to keep his commandments and his statutes which he command thee. Okay, we already read who the law, statutes, commandments were given to. Okay, the Israelites were under the law, statutes, commandments. Okay, all right, let's read on. Verse 46 And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. It means for a long time. Let's get down to verse 48. Here's another curse. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies. Which the Lord your house shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Do we not have to go to our enemies for the want of all things? Okay. Who owns the grocery stores? All right. Who owns the water company? Who owns uh, the clothing line? Okay. You want a, a, a driver's license? Who you got to go to? Esau Edom. Social security card. Oh, by the way. If you have a social security card, okay, and a birth certificate, you're basically a slave, man. Okay? Come on. This is not that hard. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Verse 49. And Lord Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far. From the ends of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly, signed by Esau Edom, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. When Crystal Ball Cologne came over here to the Americas, okay, he knew who he was coming to, 
That's why he brought five Hebrew interpreters. Okay? Because he knew he was coming to a land with the Gadites. Okay? Gad. I think Gad, Reuben, Simeon, and the northern kingdoms. All right? They were speaking Hebrew. Okay? There you go. Verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard a persons of old nor show favor to the young. These devils have not showed us no mercy at all, man. And as a matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah right quick. Isaiah 47 and verse, I think it's verse, yeah, verse, uh, verse 6. Isaiah 47 and verse 6. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance. And gave them into the, thy hands. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. Okay. So these devils did not show us no mercy at all. Okay. Now let's go back. What else we got in here? All right. <clears throat> Verse 51. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. And the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee neither corn, wine, or oil, or increase of thy kind, or flock, or thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. Verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou trustest. Throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy lands, which the glory of how thy power hath given thee. This happened in 70 AD, and let's prove that. All right? This happened in 70 AD. Let's go to Luke. All right? Let's get straight to the point. Luke 21 and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive until all nations. Wait a minute. It's being, wait, it. it's being led away into captivity until all nations. Is that not a curse? Yes, it is. That's a curse. Okay. So, come on, man. It's not that hard. But these knuckleheads... <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Mm -hmm. Let's read this again. Luke 21 <laughs> and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down unto the Gentiles, unto the Gentiles, slot, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay? Jerusalem was trodden down in 70 A.D. Jerusalem was besieged in 70 AD. Okay? Okay, all right? Come on. All right? And who took over that land? All right? Who's in that land calling themselves, uh, who's calling themselves uh, the uh, Israelites, man? They're trying to pretend like they're the people of the Lord. Pretending they're the people of the Lord. You know, all right? The small hats. All right? Not that hard, man. All right. Let's go back. All right. What else we got in here? Oh, let's go back. Let's go in. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. And the Lord Yahweh and the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee unto, scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there Thou shalt serve other gods which neither thy nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. Do not our people they worship uh Cesare Borgia, aka white man Jesus, uh the cobblestone, uh what else? You name it. Alright. That's just just to who I know. Alright, but hey, our people in all kinds of religions, Kemic. All kinds of shit, man. All right. Verse uh, 65. And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall thy 
And it's like, and neither shall the soles of thy foot have rest, but the Lord your house shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Verse 66, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and, sh it's not, and shall have no assurance of life. Okay? Did we not read that in Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 18 and 19? They hunt our steps. All right? They hunt us in the streets. Roughly paraphrasing. And as a matter of fact, let's go back. and come back to this. <coughs> All right. Let's go back. Let's read this again. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17 again. As for us. Our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. <coughs> Excuse me. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. They haunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Did the Lord say we will not have no assurance of life? We will fear day and night? Come on. That's a curse. Let's continue to read on. Our end is near, our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. All right, so we made that point. Let's get move on. All right, here's another proof, more proof that we went into slate. Slug, yeah, we went into captivity. This is Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt is symbolic to slavery, bondage. Lord say we will go back into captivity again with ships. That's the transatlantic slave trade. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. See what no more again? The land of Israel. Okay? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond men, slave man, and bond women, slave woman, and no man shall buy you. Go to that word by, it means to redeem. And as a matter of fact, let's see. Let's go. Let's prove it in case somebody's new. I'm going to look this word up just in case somebody's new. All right. There you go. Get straight to it. <clears throat> Gonna look up this word by. Alright. And it comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 7069. Kana. Kana. And that's words Kana. Alright. See? Right here. It's going straight to the point. Of Yahweh originating, creating, redeeming his people. You see? Come on. How do you get around that? Look at that. Redeem. Recover. There you go. All right. So let's read this again. Now we got an understanding. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And as a matter of fact, let's look at this word Egypt. Go back. Let's look at the word Egypt. All right. Egypt comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 4714. <clears throat> Mitzrayim. 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 All right. Let's see what we got here. Mm. We ain't got too much here. Let's see. Mm. No. I don't really tell this much. Mm. They ain't really giving us much, but never mind. Anyway, let's go to some. Cross references. What we got here. 
into Egypt. Let's see what we got. Yep, here we go. Exodus 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see, that's what that means. All right. Let's see what else we got. Um, let's see. Anything else? Uh, you know, that's, that's, that pretty much make the point. All right. Let's move on. I don't want to make this too long. All right. So we made that point. All right, so we all know what that means. Let's read this again. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68 again. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way thereof, it's not whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So the Lord says we will go back into captivity, back into slavery again. On ships, and that was part of the slave, uh, the transatlantic slave trade, man. Okay, All right. And the Lord said, We will never see the land of Israel again until He comes back and redeem His, till Yahusha comes back and redeem His people. All right, redeem the Israelites, starting with the elect. The Lord is going to put us back in the land, and as a matter of fact, let's prove that. Let's get to the scripture to prove that. All right, let's see. This is Isaiah 14, verse 1. And the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. The Lord is going to take us back to the land of Israel. Okay? Goes to show you that the people over there in the land of Israel, the small half, don't fit the prophecies. Okay? And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. All right. So we proved that. Let's move on. What else we got in here? Yeah, let's go here. This is Baruch chapter 3 and verse 7. The point is in verse 8, but I'm going to start at verse 7. And for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts, which means minds, to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. We're praising the glory how about Shem Yahshai in the land of our captivities. We're remembering ourselves. And that's the next verse, the last verse. Okay. It's not in the last chapter. Okay? Baruch 2. Okay? For we have called to mind all the iniquities of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us. Wait a minute. But I, th I thought that's not a curse, though. Let's continue to read on. For reproach and a curse. Wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> what? I thought I thought the curses was an agreement. <laughs> I thought the Israelites wasn't none of the curses. Come on, man. And to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord Yahweh our power. Verse 9. Hear Israel, the commandments of life give ear to understand wisdom. Like it says, hear Israel, the Israelites. Okay? How you get around that, man? Can't. All right. <clears throat> this is Baruch chapter 1 and verse 15. And ye shall say to the Lord Yahweh, our power, belongeth righteousness, but unto us the confusion of face, as it is as it is come to pass this day unto them of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The Israelites, all 12 tribes, okay? Verse uh, 16, and to our king, and to our princes, and to our priests, and to priests, and to our prophets, and to our fathers. Whose priests, princes, 
okay? The prophets are. The men of the Lord are, okay? Verse 17. For we have sinned before the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We sinned before our Heavenly Father, man, okay? Verse 18. And disobeyed him and have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, our power to walk in the commandments that he gave us openly. Did we not read that the law, statutes, and commandments was given to the Israelites? Yes, we did. <clears throat> since the day that our, like, since the, verse 19, since the day that the Lord, Yahweh, brought us, our forefathers, out of the land of Egypt, until this present day, we have been disobedient unto the Lord, Yahweh, Shem Yahshua, our power, and we have been neglected, ne neglected in not hearing his voice. Two thirds of our people, they don't want to hear the voice of the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahshua. And the prophets doing daily lessons, man, making our bodies a living sacrifice, trying to wake our people up. But they don't want to hear. And this is why two thirds are going to be destroyed. Okay? Verse 20. Wherefore the evils cleave unto us, and the curse. Wait a minute. But we ain't under the curses, though. This is what this guy said. We're not under the curses. Curses are an agreement. <laughs> you have to agree to these curses. No, that's not what the Bible says. Verse 20 again. Wherefore the evils cleave unto us, the Israelites, and the curse was the Lord Yahweh appointed by Moses, his servant, at the time that he brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt to give us a land that flowed with milk and honey, like as it seems to this day. Verse 21. Nevertheless, we have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahshua our power, according to all the words of the prophets whom he sent unto us. Did not the Lord say, I sent you by my servants the prophets, but they will not hearken unto me? Okay? But they say, we will not hearken. Our people don't want to hear this message. They coming up against this message. And it's our people that's coming up against this message more than anybody else. Our own people, man. The Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. That's okay, though, man. All right? That's all right. <laughs> because, hey, judgment is about to go forth. And when this word is gone, it's gone. They wish you would have listened. Verse 22. But every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart, which means mine, to serve strange gods and to do evil in the sight of the glory of our power. So, only the elect is going to be saved this time. Let's read this. This is Daniel chapter 9 and verse 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord Yahweh Shia our power to walk in his laws which he set before us by his servants the prophets. Come on. Who like we read? Who the law statutes command was given to? The Israelites. Okay. Verse 11. Yea, all Israel has transgressed it, thy law even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. Let that sink in. Hmm? But I thought we wasn't on no curse though. <laughs> but wait. I thought we, the Israelites are not on the curses. It's not no, uh, what did he say? The curses are, are not no, uh, generic thing, something, what he said. <laughs> Let's read this again, man. You Christians are through, man. You're through. Okay? Point blank, period. <laughs> Y'all are through. Verse 11. 
Yea, all Israel has transgressed at thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of Yahweh, because we have sinned against him. Verse 12, And he hath confirmed his word, which he spake against us and against our judges that judge us by bringing us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done until Jerusalem. Verse 13, As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us, yet made, <coughs> made we not our prayer before the Yahweh, our power, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. So we still disobeying Yahweh Bashmi al Two thirds are the elect is coming back to Yahweh Bashmi al Okay. What else we got in here? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> this is the <coughs> this is Isaiah chapter uh twenty two. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, man. Isaiah twenty two verse seventeen. <coughs> Behold, the glory how about Shmuel Shai carry thee away with a mighty <coughs> to a mighty captivity. Let me read that again. It's sloppy. Isaiah 22 and verse 17. Behold, the Lord Yahweh Shai will carry thee away <coughs> with a mighty captivity <coughs> and will surely cover thee. Verse 18. He will surely, <coughs> excuse me, violently turn and toss thee like a ball. <clears throat> Come on, man. Nobody but Satan. <clears throat> Nobody but damn Satan, man. <clears throat> Excuse me, Slunky. Isaiah 22 and verse 18. He will surely violate. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shall thy die, and there shall there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. Okay? So the Lord said he carried us away in the captivity. He put us in this predicament. Okay? Alright? And that's a curse. Okay? Alright? Mm, let's see what else we got in here. Yeah, let's read this. <clears throat> and I done made my point, man. I'm going I'm to read this and then I'm going to close out. This is Deuteronomy chapter uh, 30 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. You see, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind all the nations, whither the Lord, Yahweh thy power, have driven thee. Verse 2. And thou shalt return unto the Lord, Yahweh thy power, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou, thy, and thy children, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. Verse uh, 3. That then the glory of Yahweh Bashem Yahshua thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations. Whether the Lord Yahweh Shinyashah that power has scattered thee. So we're about to be freed out of this captivity, man. Alright? The curses are going to be lifted off of us. Okay? And as a matter of fact, let me close out with that. That's Revelations 22 and verse... I'm start at verse... Hmm, let's see... Uh, I want to start. I'm going to start verse 2. And in the midst of the streets of it, and on either side of the rivers, there was the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruits, and yield her fruit every mouth, 
so now every month and the leaves of the tree were from the healing of the nations verse 3 and there shall be no more curse but the throne of Yahweh and the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him okay there you go all right so i'm gonna end it there man all right so lord when i pray his lesson was edified and so lucky about the coffin all right like i say i'm still getting over this junk all right so with that, I pray this lesson was edifying and straight to the point. All praises and glorifications go to the high Bashim Yahshai, Bashim Rakakadash, double loss to the elders and the apostles, a great millstone who will well, peace, blessings, and citations go to the hopeful neck that scattered abroad. See you with another lesson soon, Lord willing. Chrome Yashirala Shang Wam, Wa Baba Ball, about one BTA Baba Ball. Boom! Shang Wam till next time, Shang Wam.